Welcome to episode three of our stock scanning series. So far in episodes one and two, we've talked about how to create a scan bringing you objectively the highest premium puts in the market. And in episode two, we talked about how to evaluate the results of that scan to determine which of those options are good potential investment ideas. But when we run a scan like this, as we can see, there's 529 results just in the basic high ROR put scan. And yes, we do have the tools to figure out one by one which is a good investment idea. However, 529 is still a lot of options to go through whether you understand the process or not. So the goal in today's episode is going to be how can we go from these results, this list of 529 different options, to create a smaller, much more focused list to attack certain investment criteria that we think create an attractive investment. Welcome back to the Hourglass Trader, where as time passes, we make money. So once again, here are the results that we get when we run our typical high ROR puts scan. So this is what we're looking at right here. And as we mentioned at the top of the video, there's 529 different results. We understand how to take a look at each of these and evaluate which is a good idea. But today we're gonna look at a feature which is gonna help us cut down this list of 529 into a smaller, much more focused list. And it all revolves around the intersect with feature that we see right here. So when we look at each of these individual options, we take a look at the chart, we look at the stock that it's attached to, and we decide if some of the different technical criteria that we see, you know, between things like RSI, between things like implied volatility, support and resistance on the chart, uh, we check those to see if it lines up with what we like to typically see and is a good idea for an investment. With the intersect feature, you could already put some of those criteria into this scan. So what it does is basically what we have set up right now is an option scan. We can intersect this with a stock scan so that we take criteria from stock that we like and apply it to filter down this list. So if you go to the stock hacker, there's all sorts of different criteria you can add here and you can add really whatever you're looking for depending on what type of investment you're going for. And if we go back to the option hacker, we have high ROR puts without earnings and we wanna intersect that with a stock scan that we've already created. This is in personal, and this is gonna be called HT oversold stocks. What this stock scan does is identify stocks that are oversold. So in theory, we have this huge list already of stocks that have really, really nice premium to sell on the options. Now we want it to tell us of these 529 options, which are tied to stocks that are oversold. And again, all of these that you see right here with either green or purple icons are available to download on our website, hourglass-trader.com, and you could plug these into your very own Thinkorswim module to get the same results that we're getting. So if we plug in HT oversold stocks, we hit scan, hit yes to continue, and all of a sudden, we have a list of three. We went from just over 500 different options to three. So just using that simple intersect feature, we have a much more focused approach. Now let's go top to bottom and talk a little bit about how we evaluate some of these options. So PSNY, the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to pull the chart up, PSNY. And we see it on a three-year basis. Uh, it hasn't been trading for three years, which is why these candles are so big. So let's go into 20 days. Uh, peak at 13.4, bottomed out at 8.46. We go to the live news, a little spoiler alert here. Uh, this is a SPAC, and we really like to stay away from SPACs post-merger because we've seen what can happen with those. Example, IRNT, where if we zoom out to the, uh, to the one year, this is a very, very common pattern for a SPAC. Uh, another example, RMO. This is another very, very common example of what happens to SPACs post-merger, so we stay away from those. Uh, but WPM, we could take a look at WPM. Let's throw that one up there, and that's Wheaton Precious Metals Corp. Uh, and it's falling down nicely. And what we like about this scan, you'll remember, we intersected it with HT oversold stocks, and we evaluate whether or not a stock is oversold using RSI, or Relative Strength Index. Anything over 70 is considered very overbought, meaning it tends to come back down in the short term, and anything below 30 is considered oversold, meaning it typically is gonna bounce back up in the short term. And if you look over the historical period just for WPM, we could look back in November of 21, uh, when RSI got above 70, right after that, it fell back down. The last time that it was in the blue, so to speak, was back at the beginning of May, and it bounced right back up from that point in time. So we love RSI as a short-term indicator of where a stock might head, and, and what this intersect with feature has done is give us stocks where that RSI is low, suggesting a short-term bounce. I'm just not a huge fan of what we see here because it's still above the pre-COVID highs at about 28. Uh, but let's go to the third and final stock that we see on the scan here, and it's gold, ticker G-O-L-D. Now, if we look at gold, the three-year chart's gonna come up first, and what we said about Whedon was we didn't like it because it was still above the pre-COVID highs. 
Gold has now fallen down below the pre-COVID highs, uh, has an RSI as low as it has ever been over the past 30 years, and since it showed up on this stock, we know that the option premium is going to be decent. Now it's 1.35% uh, just out of the money, 1533 on a 15 strike. Uh, and you might say, well, that's not a lot of premium compared to some other things that we see, but this is a gold stock. This is a commodity. It's inherently not going to be as volatile as other stocks that we like to look at. Uh, so with that in mind, we could pull the one-year chart up to get a little bit closer of a look at it. Uh, but RSI is sitting down here at 24.31 the last time it got this low. Similarly to Wheaton, was right at the middle of May right here, and it bounced up short-term. And you'll remember when we're selling weekly options, we really only need a short-term bounce. Uh, so that low RSI of 24 combined with an implied volatility that's trending a little bit higher than where it's been in the past year, uh, those two things to me indicate that it's a great time to strike on gold. Uh, so what I did was I sold a 15 strike put last uh, Friday, which was yesterday. And at the time of me filming and uploading this video, I have no idea how this is going to work out. But uh, hopefully I sold it for 25 cents. It's already down to 20, meaning we've made 50 bucks. Hopefully we get the full 250. But we shall see. The idea isn't really so much about whether the trade works or doesn't. It's just about identifying these characteristics in stocks via our scan uh, to put us in a position where the odds are on our side. And that's exactly what I think we've got right here with the intersection of high implied volatility, low RSI, and nice option premium, which we've brought to the forefront via the high ROR put scanner intersected with oversold stock. And while gold is a trade that we placed yesterday and are hoping it does well in the future, uh, one example of something that we did very, very recently is with MSOS, which popped up on our high ROR put intersected with the oversold stock scanner. And as you can see right here, RSI was getting down into the blue. Implied volatility was so-so, but there were decent premium on the options as it was bottoming out around 10. So what happened if you go a few weeks into the future, it bounced nicely. And again, we don't need huge bounces. In fact, with our option selling strategy, we know that as long as the stock stays flat, we're going to make money. Uh, any bounce just like this is an added bonus. But we did get that bounce, bounced right off of that oversold level. Implied volatility is still high. So as you can see right here, we're still going back to the bank on these. But so far, we've racked up a little over $500 in profit just off of these trades and just off of a five-second exercise intersecting our regular scanner with a little bit more focused of a stock scanner as well. And to identify that opportunity in about five minutes and continue to capitalize on it for a few weeks in a row, I think that's a pretty efficient use of your time from a profitability perspective. And talking a little bit about some of these technical aspects, particularly looking at implied volatility, I mentioned that gold's implied volatility is a little bit higher than it normally is. And one metric that we use to conceptualize this is the IV rank or IV percentile, and both of these we have plotted on the chart. So while we may get somewhat similar results, we could actually go to the scan and intersect it with another stock filter under personal, which is gonna be HT IV rank scanner. So this is gonna take our typical high ROR put, the highest premium in the market, and only show us stocks where IV is comparably high as compared to where it's been over the past year, with the implication that the IV reverts down to the mean, which sucks premium out of the options. And the reason that I invested in gold, I guess kind of getting ahead of myself here, is because it showed up on both of these scans. Not only was it very, very oversold, uh, the implied volatility relatively is also decently high compared to where it's been over the historical period. Uh, but using the scan, you'll notice we get slightly different results. And one result that pops up on here is Unity, ticker U. Uh, and if we take a look at you, you're going to see this shine through, right? You're going to see really high volatility as compared to the rest of the year. And you'll see that the IV rank is 76 and the IV percentile is 72. And we have the description right here saying exactly what that means. Basically, 92% of days uh, over the past year, the IV was lower than it currently is. So again, the idea is that IV falls back down, which sucks premium out. And when we sell premium, we love to see premium drop. And that results in profit for us. Uh, but another one, right? We, we take a look at maybe the 180 day right here. We identify that it's been bouncing off of support here at right around the 32-ish level, 33. And for the upcoming week, we sold, where are they? Uh, some 34 strike puts, which are 2.55% ROR. Uh, they're about $2.50 out of the money, which is about a 7 to 8% cushion for the week for max profit. And I think it's on a stock where everything lines up really nicely. You've got something around support. You have comparably high implied volatility. We hope that sucks back down. But... We also intersected with our high ROR put filter, so we know that the options on this chain are gonna have good returns, and that's what you can see right here with a 2.55% ROR on Unity. 
And that's just a quick example of how we can use the intersect with feature as a very, very useful tool to cut down what I think personally is still a very, very useful list of 529 stocks. Uh, but let's be honest, we probably don't have time to evaluate all 529 options here. And you don't necessarily need to scan for RSI or IV rank or IV percentile like we did. If there are other filters that you like to apply to certain stocks that may make an investment more attractive to you, you can also create your own stock filters there as well, save them down, and then intersect with your very own that you've created here as well. So just a great tool to save yourself a little bit of time and make your scans a lot more effective, efficient, and hopefully profitable. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. We're hoping to continue this option scanning series and make a few more videos to teach you guys how to be pros with option scanning because it's very easy to execute trades. A lot of the skill in this comes in finding these trades. If you're not subscribed to us already, feel free to subscribe to the channel, throw us a like, maybe a little comment to let us know you watch the video. Uh, come see us on our website, hourglass-trader.com to see everything we've got. Come join the Discord server. And uh, I think that's just about everything we've got. So thank you as always for watching. And until next time, this has been Hourglass Trader, where as time passes, we make money.